Hi there, my name is Maria Lewis. I'm an assistant curator here at Australia's National Film Museum, ACME, and I'm the person behind this program, Yen Noir, which is looking at a 10 year period that birthed some of Australia's great neo-noir films, including, of course, The Hunter. I'm so honored to be joined by the star of The Hunter and one of the most renowned stage and screen actors of his generation, Mr. Willem Dafoe. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for that introduction and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> to be, um, to be here to be with you. <laughs> oh, well, it's like truly, honestly, so thrilled to have you. Um, the first time I interviewed you about this film 10 years ago, I was a baby film reporter, most definitely not very good. But one of the things that really stayed with me was how generous you were with your answers and also how passionate you were about this film. And I was wondering, how do you feel about The Hunter now with a decade's worth of distance? Well, I, I remember it happily. I, I, I really enjoyed shooting it. And um, I think it's a, an interesting film. Uh, not only did I enjoy, enjoy shooting in Tasmania, which is quite a particular place and was a great adventure, but also I learned a lot of things, um, particularly some of the bushcraft stuff. Uh, a guy by the name of uh, Lee True taught me uh, how to set, you know, uh, traps and all kinds of things. Uh, and I always find that when you learn something, it, you have a shift and you sort of become a new person and it opens up you to think a different way. So I had that kind of experience and Tasmania was like a place that I've never been before. Um, so it was thrilling. So I remember it quite fondly and I remember my cast members fondly. I had worked with Sam Neill before and I love him. He's, uh, he always tickles me because I don't know. I, something about his dry sense of humor. When he's serious, I think he's joking. And when he's joking, I think he's serious. I, maybe I'm just an earnest American and I miss something there, but uh, he makes me laugh. Um, and he's good. He's good partner. And uh, all the other cast. Um, so I have fond memories. And also uh, Daniel, this was a passion project for him. I think it's interesting that when I, I like the script that it comes from the, a Julia Lee uh, book, of, I think it's it's the same name, yes? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I like the script very much. And, you know, I'm very particular about filmmakers that I work with. And I didn't know Daniel Netheim's work. And he showed me some stuff and it was fine. And I don't mean to diss anybody, but he showed me like some of his television work that was like cop shows and stuff like that. And, and it's funny, I started talking to him and I started talking about what I saw. And then he said, well, you know, actually, would you like to see some of my student films, which kind of was, were a little closer to my heart as far as experimentation and what I dreamed about. And he showed me some very early student films. And it's kind of funny, and I remember it, that that's kind of what won me over because I saw... Uh, you know, him as a filmmaker better in his student films than I did in some of the uh, TV work that he was doing. So I was on board. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, the fact that uh, it's it's uh, film with a lo long periods where I don't have text and I'm doing things that's very close to my heart. Um, you know, it becomes less, you know, it becomes more lived. It becomes more... Um, experienced because it's just me and the landscape doing things. And that's, that is a pleasure to do. Uh, it makes the pretending a little more available because you're not dealing with certain kind of dramatological things that you're weighing. Mm. Yeah, I did want to ask about that because I think some of your most recognized on the street roles are these scenes stealing supporting turns. And I was wondering if you felt like your experience in the theater really helped with The Hunter, where you're not only oftentimes the only person in a scene with no scene partner, but you really are in almost every scene of the film. Nature was my scene partner. 
<laughs> that sounds like Australian tourism ad, but all right. I was dancing with the camera. Um, sure. I mean, uh, my work in the theater um, and still continues, uh, I still continue to work in the theater. And that really shapes who I am as a performer. Mm. As I was growing up, that, that really, you know, formed, uh, created tendencies that I have, uh, you know, about um, pretending and doing things and task oriented rather than maybe more psychological or interpretive uh, kinds of things. Uh, taking a score and living inside of it, making that, uh, collaborating on that score. And then once you get that score, um, having an experience and hopefully it's transparent enough that people can experience it with you. That's the idea rather than, um, you know, basically showing uh, as opposed, uh, I mean, doing as opposed to showing, which is the big lesson that you learn in the theater. It really, uh, at least the theater that I grew up in, it wasn't about, it was never about indicating things or interpreting things, interpreting things. It was always about making things and doing things in front of people. Mm. I was wondering the archetype of the reluctant hero is one that's very familiar to audiences and especially very familiar to fans of the noir and neo-noir genres. How did you go about coloring Martin with so much nuance so that he didn't feel just like a stereotype per se? Well, thank you. Um, if that's true, I, <laughs> you know, I had nothing to sell. Uh, once again, I, I, he, he is a mysterious character and he's a private character and he doesn't, there's very, uh, there's not really a backstory. You don't know who he is. He's a mystery man. That's kind of his role. He's got a, he's like a secret agent in the respect that he's supposed to be mysterious. Mm. So um, the experience was my experience doing these things. So I didn't have to point any to anything. I didn't have to pay off anything. It was sort of like me in a situation. <laughs> and as I say, I like to pretend. So it's like, I didn't have to, yeah, I can only say, uh, I didn't feel the obligation to pay off things mm. because he's a screen for the audience. He does was it what he does. You don't know quite why, and uh, you go along with him. Um, I am conscious that he has a shift in his feelings, but that's, that's very clear. And given the progression of what he does in the movie, you know, you hop on board and, uh, it, you'd have to be dead not to make that shift. From memory, you really relished working with the then child performers in The Hunter, Morgan Davies and Finn Woodlock. What was it about their performances that you thought really added something to the film and helped humanise Martin? Well, they, they were just sweet kids and smart kids and... Um, I enjoyed them. And we, you know, we were shooting in, in not the most hospitable places and not with, you know, not with a huge, huge budget. We had enough to make the movie. It's not like uh, the, the producers were very good. Um, I was happy how production went, but it, you know, we made a little family. We were sort of out in the wilderness. So um they were sweet. And Daniel is a very, uh, the director is a very uh, kind and very uh, gentle man. So he really made it comfortable for the kids so they didn't feel so much pressure to perform. As I remember, uh, Finn was younger and he has basically a mute role. And, and Morgan was a chatterbox. And uh, he was very... Um, He's very charming and, and, and sweet. And they were both very clever. So I liked them. They weren't, they, you know, they weren't like the usual uh, trained uh, child actors. They, they were kids and I enjoyed that. Although they had skills. Uh, I mean, Morgan had skills. Uh, she had made other films. I don't know how much her experience, how much he was experienced before, but he had stuff. 
mm-hmm. where Finn was more, you know, he, she, he was younger. He was younger. Yeah. It comes across as really sincere and authentic, which can be a tricky thing when, you know, acting is about sort of like tapping into your lived experience. And as a kid, you don't have so much lived experience yet to tap into. But we were making it. We were making it, you know. As I say, we became like a little family. Yeah, exactly. That makes a lot of sense. It really comes across, I think, in the film. Uh, I was wondering if you had a, we are Australia's National Film Museum after all, and I was wondering if you had a favourite Australian filmmaker and please feel like you're not obligated to say Daniel just in case because no, this no. is about the hunter. You're going right? to put me in trouble because I've worked, <laughs> with, I've, I've worked with a lot of Australian DPs. I've worked with some Australian actors. You know, the Australian invasion of... Uh, of uh, North American cinema is well known. Um, I'd be hard pressed to say. I'm I'm never good declaring favorites anyway. It's not just to be polite. It's like I, I don't like the finality of kind of that kind of statement. And I may make a terrible mistake because it may be from you may not be from the heart, and I may uh, I uh, may be dissing someone that I uh, am forgetting. But uh, no, I. Listen, I've made three films in Australia. Um, I've been there with the theater. Yes, I have. And uh, I always enjoy it when I'm there. And it's kind of amazing uh, how much, uh, uh, how strong Australia's presence is, not only in their homegrown stuff, but how how many uh, Australians are working in uh, cinema and in other countries mm, it's reverse colonialism you know we're trying to take it back <laughs> one thing at a time mr william defoe thank you so much for joining us and thank you right. so much for your time i really appreciate it well i hope uh, people see the movie and uh you know hope the program goes well